I was surprised recently to find a university still using the chlorobenzene process to lift off gold stripes. So I thought I'd put down what I know as they asked me for some advice. I was surprised to find they weren't even getting a lift off profile with the resist, so the chlorobenzene process wasn't working, they just assumed that it was. If you are using a silicon or gallium arsenide substrate and you form um, some uh, uh, photoresist stencil, you can cleave across the substrate, uh, turn it on its side and look at it from a, without an SEM on a microscope if the resist is about one micron thick or more and you can see the profile so you can check whether you're getting a lift off profile quite easily with a microscope. However, I'm talking about contact printing here and when you contact print a flat substrate onto a flat mask, you'll get an air gap with an MA56, for instance, a liner. So uh, the air gap, um, however it's caused, it can be caused by upstanding features on your substrate or anything like that. The air gap is going to really change the profile of resist you get um, according to your exposure. So this is contact printing perhaps with an MA56. On the left is the profile of the resist you're going to get where the air gap is. On the right is the much, much more um, straighter profile, more vertical profile that you will get without chlorobenzene um, where there's very good contact between the mask. And with the chlorobenzene process, which, as you know, will give you an overhang, uh, this will be the ideal profile that you'll get with the resist. You can see that there's an overhang. So you, you know the process. You soak it in, uh, you, you bake the resist and soak it in chlorobenzene and rebake it. But where there is an air gap on the left, you'll get this kind of profile, uh, where you get much better or near perfect mass contact, the profile will be much more vertical and the overhang will be more effective. So it's important to remember that you'll have where well, there's an air gap. After metallization, the, um, the profile on the left will help to form wings on the metallization after liftoff. Whereas where you've got a more vertical profile with good contact, you won't tend to get the wings, but you will have to adjust that overhang and the angle of the metallization in order not to get wings. When you look down the microscope, wings can appear as very black, horrible lines, on, perhaps on beside side of a gold stripe, whereas in the middle there would be a stripe with no wings, although there will always be some black line, but often it's the wings aren't continuous, so you'll see lots of black dotty lines along the edge of the metallization or the wings may even fall off and lie all over the substrate. Remember that the angle of metallization will help to form wings on the metallization after liftoff. When you're baking on a hot plate with the chlorobenzene process, a hot plate is perhaps 90 degrees um, for say a minute, you'll tend to get a slightly more ragged overhang. So on the left you have a, a hot plate resist a baked a hot plate baked resist on the right you've got the oven baked resist which is a, maybe at 70 degrees C uh, for 20 minutes it's much it's a much um, smoother looking profile in my experience sometimes the chlorobenzene goes completely wrong and instead of forming a nice um, profile the top of the resist becomes completely insoluble and so you get an absolutely horrible looking overhang and sometimes it takes a long time to develop this out so it's it's a really horrible looking overhang it's 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 not the chlorobenzene process has basically failed and the reason is the reason it does develop out at all is because the developer tends to get through pinholes in the surface so the developer gets through in a pinhole it develops out the resist the exposed resist underneath the pinholes 
and and gradually if you leave it in long enough it will it will form a sort of profile but it's that it's that horrible raggedy profile that I showed you in the previous slide I was contact printing small space widths line widths so so, so I, was, I was printing in positive tone resist I was printing um, windows which were 0.5 microns in in width and you have to if you're going to do that you have to arrange for intimate contact between the mask and the top of the resist and I'm talking about the MA56 with them um, with the uh, four or five or three six five line exposure where you get it's good to to arrange to get really good contact so you want like a you want to print on a mesa really and this helps one to let the air out from underneath the substrate so that most of the wafer can be in good contact. But it also helps to give to give you a natural undercut to your resist because the exposure will widen out. But it's that really good contact you can get if you if you arrange to print your small line widths on a, uh, on a MESA. When we were printing MESFETs, that's uh, Gallimars Night ICs and MESFETs, we tended to have a, a natural mesa because you were printing these half micron or one micron lines are uh, where there was a, a natural the uplift in the resist because it was flowing over the source and drain features which had already been established in previous processing we also find found that we had to widen out the end source and the end drain as it were uh, on those features so that uh, the resist flowed up and reached its its maximum height so that all of the places where you were going to print a half micron gate or even a one micron gate were as close to the mask as they could be uh, this is because when you're printing a half micron in those uh, with like three six five or, uh, or four or five line widths you, you basically have to use the minimum exposure to develop out the resist down to the bottom and I was using one micron of resist thickness and oddly enough I also had to use uh, four or five line widths to expose because it was more transparent in the resist so you could give a, a shorter or a shorter exposure um, to the mask which were about 0.5 microns in space width uh, if you use 365 it, you had to give an increased exposure because the resist was more uh, absorbent to that wavelength so I used to find that 405 line widths printed from a 0.5 micron mask width would give me uh, at best about 0.55 microns uh, gate length that's uh, that's the gold strike would be about 0.55 microns wide so uh, uh, it's an odd thing because you to print small line widths you're supposed to use uh, shorter and shorter line width, uh, shorter and shorter exposing energy but I found that in this practical case four or five line uh, width was better uh, because it, the resist was more transparent at that wavelength um, and that was, uh, that was enough to fulfill the, the design criteria of the MESFETs.